Welcome to Asian Horizon. In this program, we're going to examine various infrastructure strategies in Central and South Asia. Last year, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan and Pakistan agreed to build a railway corridor through these countries. It's going to go from Tashkent to Samarkand, which already has a high-speed rail connection. And from Samarkand, it's going to be built down south to Masrawi Sharif in northern Afghanistan. From there to Kabul, and then east via Jalalabad, to Peshawar in Western Pakistan. It's gonna connect into the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor via Islamabad, down south to Karachi, which is the financial center in Pakistan, and onwards to Gwadar. This is providing ocean access for Uzbekistan and Afghanistan, which are landlocked countries. It's gonna create enormous opportunities for logistics, cargo, economic development, trade, import and export. Now, this is already on the planning stage still, and in January, they applied for financial assistance from international financial institutions about approximately 5 billion US dollars. The timeline of when this probably could start and being built and you know what is the completion date we're looking at, it's hard to say, but I think it's gonna be probably within a you know four to 10 year period plus minus. At the backdrop of this, the Uzbek government is planning a conference this summer in Tashkent entitled Central and South Asia, Regional Interconnectedness challenges and opportunities. They already invited Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, who accepted the invitation. So that shows how they want to have the, you know, the Russia involved in building this railway corridor across Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, which is very interesting because Russia, as I said in last week's program, Russia has maintained contacts with various local leaders in northern Afghanistan, particularly among the Tajik, Uzbek, and Turkmen communities, which is very important also to have them involved and engaged. The connection from Tashkent to Gwadar is going to be a 3,700 kilometer railway connection. So that is a, you know, really a long project. The second project, which is interesting, is now a railway connection which is built from southern Turkmenistan in the city of Kerki across northern Afghanistan via Masar Sharif, Kunduz, and into southern Tajikistan. From there, it's probably going to build a railway connection up to Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, in Almaty, and onwards to Khorgos, which is a major logistics cluster between China and Kazakhstan. The third is the rail connection in the north-south transport corridor, which is built from Chabahar in Iran, north to Zahedan near the Afghan border. From there, they're probably also, I think, gonna build a connection onwards to Herat in Western Afghanistan, and from there to Kabul. Now that is a 2,300 kilometer range total if they complete it all the way to Kabul. Now these various projects show the important strategic location of Afghanistan between Central and South Asia. The next project, which is not planned yet, but I think it may come eventually, is also if China and Iran agree on a strategic agreement, which they've been negotiating since 2016, if they do, I think they will then term, you know, what will be the China-Iran Economic Corridor, C-I-E-C. -E and that is really interesting. And one of the corridors I think they will be focusing on is probably also to see if they can build a railway corridor from China via the Wakhan Corridor in all the way in eastern Afghanistan and then across Afghanistan to Iran. Now, that is not decided yet, but I think that may come in the coming years. So regardless, there will be a range of interesting infrastructure strategies in Central and South Asia in the coming years, which will create opportunities for industrial companies, energy companies, financial institutions, and various you know, players on the ground. So this is really something to be monitoring and tracking as we move forward. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you next week.